Ford. Hi, everybody. It's Agnes. Hey. Yes, who's here? Hello, Lenisa. Yes, Lenisa's <laughs> back. <laughs> Lenisa, part two. Here's the to be yes. continued today. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Very much so good to see you. I'm you know you always put a smile on my face. Oh, uh, well, likewise. And I'm um, really looking forward to hearing you, your next installment um you were very very loved in your interview and you were so giving and so warm and mm -hmm. it was a fabulous interview that you and i had so you and i said we would do another one when the time was right so here you are yes yes yes, yes. and i do i want to first say it, it was it actually was almost overwhelming i'm like <laughs> oh my gosh you know my kids called me and they said oh mom you just that is so you mom you just said everything you just said everything but more importantly mom it looks like it helped a lot of people and yeah. so that made me feel good you know that came from a good place i mean sometimes you have to be vulnerable to yeah. allow people to you know the heal so i loved it so thank you for the mm. for asking me to come back and it's it, you always do it at the right time. <laughs> I mean, you really do. Because I'm going to be honest, I was going to reach out to you. I've had a lot that has transpired since our last interview. Um, yeah. This last month has been um, with my highs and with the lows. I'm yeah. going to be honest. I, last month I turned 50. Yeah. So that was, I mean, I was celebrating my, my <laughs> twin daughters that are 28 and my son that is 20. When I tell you they got me, I mean, they had friends flying in all over to celebrate me. And so typically I'm not someone that you can surprise, but they did. They did a wonderful job. So that was like, oh gosh, okay, thank you, Lord. I'm 50 and I'm celebrated and you know, just walking and all the peace and the joy of it. And just as high as I was, I got a call from my um, stepmother. Yes. I was out about um, that morning. I had taken like an eight mile walk and all energized. And when she, when I got the call, actually it was coming from my father and I picked up the phone and I said, Hey dad. And it was my stepmother on the phone. Yeah. And she said, Lenisa, and I was like, mom? And she says, hold on, let me get myself composed. And I'm like, okay, I know this cannot be good. Yeah. When she's calling from my dad's phone and she's saying, let me get myself composed. So then she tells me that my father had, um, was in ICU and my father lived in, D um, in Detroit, Michigan. And as you know, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. And she says, I felt like I needed to call you. I didn't want to scare you. I mean, we thought, it was going to get better. But right now, Lenisa, I'm just thinking you need to be here. Your, um, your other two sisters are here. So that was Saturday on a Saturday. Um, that next morning, I flew out Sunday morning to be in Detroit. And when I tell you, Anya's, um, I, you know, when my mom passed at 56, you know, she happened suddenly and didn't know. And, you know, it kind of, that, that, that got me. But mm. here I was with my, lo my, my last living parent. Yep. I'm having to look at it in an experience, him mm. being on his deathbed. And that's basically what they told us. It was like, you know what? We don't even know, we don't even know what to, to tell you. Um, all we can say is just be around him and love him. And I was like, Lord, why are we doing this? I mean, please tell me, help yeah. me find the joy in this because yeah. I never expected to be sitting at the deathbed if you're, you know, my, my father. Yeah. And, and how, I tell you, how old, how, old mm -hmm. he? how old is he? 70, 73, 73 oh, so young really as really well. Old. Yeah. No. And it was just, he went in for one procedure and just everything just start adding to that and yeah. kidney starts shutting down and you know it was just it was just a sad situation and so i'm sitting here looking at him on tubes and he was on breathing tubes and i'm thinking okay lord please help me to find the joy in this because i'm not you know i know everything is about there's a blessing in it for me and for us well when i tell you what transpired on the day that my dad passed now he, he lasted for about, um, he lived for about a week and a half. 
Yeah. And the day of, we were getting ready to send him over to hospice because they were like, you know, we just, we can't do anything with him in ICU. We're going to take him to hospice. Mm. And we were, you know, just kind of vasculating. We were like, okay, Lord, is this really happening? Mm. And my three sisters and I, my two sisters and I were sitting beside him on the bed and my stepmother was on the other side. And the nurse walked in and she said, you know what? I'm going to walk out. I'm going to give you guys some time. Now, the whole week and a half that I had been there, my dad had said nothing. He wasn't moving. He wasn't responsive. But, you know, because I know energies and stuff, I knew, I believe he could hear us because, you yeah. know, I'm that spiritual. I know that source. And so we would talk to him, but my dad never moved. Yeah. This is what he did in his, this is the gift that he left us. When that nurse walked out, my father opened his eyes, turned his head to the right like this. When he did that, my sisters and I said, Dad, we're at peace. Follow the light. Follow what your heart is saying. Mm -hmm. My dad did this. He turned his head to the left. He looked at my stepmother, squeezed her hand, looked up and it was like you could see him following and he mm -hmm. took his last breath and he died when yeah. I tell you we did not drop a tear that was such a I mean there was so much peace and so much joy in that room and that let me know you know what this, it really is bigger than what we think. You know, we talk about that source energy and we talk about God and we mm. talk about the power and we talk about, you know, the law of attraction. And, and if you just yeah. believe it and there's something that force is out there that's helping you. My father left me with the gift that I know that there's something out there. Mm. I know that there's a God. I, I don't care what you want to call it, source mm -hmm. energy, the universe or whatever. There. Yeah is something that's bigger than all of us. And it just put me on such a place of peace. So that just kind of set it off. You know, that was in July. That was the end of July. August has been an exceptional month. And here we are getting going into September. So yeah, I am just, wow. I, I, I thought I was on cloud nine. I really am. I am truly at that place of a peace that surpasses all understanding. I really am. And yeah. when you reached out to me, I just said, Lord, of course, this is perfect because everything <laughs> about me is at that place of just, you know, receiving and peace. And I, and I was going to reach out to you anyway. I told you I was, I had been thinking about you and I said, yeah. well, you know what? You know, I believe in coaching and you, you pay for what. And I said, I'm going to send her $200 and I'm going to have an hour of her time. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to do because I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate you because you did. You helped put a foundation back for me that I've been searching for for a long time. And you called, you, you emailed me. I woke up the next morning and I saw the email. I said, Lord, thank you. <laughs> We're in sync. Yes, we wow. are. That's an amazing, you know, it's, I remember when my dad passed away, he was sick for about seven years with Alzheimer's and I remember mm. he had died and I had been with my mom and we had been to see him at that time. And I mm. remember driving back because my mum lives an hour and 15 minutes out of Sydney. So I'd been in the mountains where she lives and I was driving back down to Sydney Mm -hmm. And I was on this huge stretch of freeway. It was quite late at night. I think about 11 p.m. And I remember seeing this one star and it was like it just hit me in the chest. It was like the energy of mm. that death and that it was like that merging of dad with the universe and then it being sent back That's to me. It. I will never forget that moment. Those moments where you exactly. just go, Holy heck, that's just totally not yes. my axis. Huge. Yes. Moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a huge. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know. I get chill bumps every time I think about those, that last, yeah. you know, two or three minutes. Yeah. And, um, you know, we shed more tears the week 
before, but that day, I mean, when the nurses and everyone start coming in, they were crying, but we were consoling them. We yeah. were like, oh no, don't cry. Yeah. Let me tell you what just happened. Yeah. Let me tell you how great this thing is and yeah. what we have to look for it and how we all can have and be and do wow. because our father just showed us the source that supports yeah. everything we want. So I get it, girl. I yeah, get it. Yeah, wonderful. And that was only a month ago for you. Wow. Yes, the 26th, July the 26th. Wow. Yeah. Huge yeah. moment, huge moment. Yeah. And it sounds like you've had a good feeling about it since it happened. I have. Um, and then a couple of things that um, it's like when that happened, that even put me in, you know, my book, The Eulogy. Yes. Um, it's like it even, this even became um, a, a more of a focus to me. Um, yeah. People start reaching and reaching out to me and more so. And, I, I, and it made me understand even why I call it the eulogy now. And it has done, it's just so, because people were, I remember at our, the, the, at the memorial and that's where you do the eulogy. Yeah. I was sitting there and there were a couple of people knew that I was a, um, that I had written this last book and, and yeah. somebody said to me, they said, you know, how apropos that your last book, you call it the eulogy and here you're doing that. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I said, but let me explain it. Now I get it. I said, even though this is a, has been a painful two weeks. Yeah. At the end, I saw how to, how to take that pain and find the joy. And the joy was so much better than the pain. And that's all a eulogy is. Mm. You sit and you talk about the best times not the yeah. worst of it yeah and so from that that put me on another platform for people that I didn't even know in Detroit yeah. and so book sales have gone up great with that and Bella Body is great and so it is you Fabulous. know I, I have no complaints right now girl none you, at all can you explain a little bit because I mean you and I have had chats about this and we've done your first interview but for people that are going to hop on and see you for the first time today. Can you just let them know why you actually wrote that book? Because this was well before your dad passed away. What, it's why exactly did you write that at that time. Well, you know what? And I'm, I'm like, so what I'd like to do is the book was really written from a painful journal, um, journey um, journal that I wrote in my uh, journal, and I had read it to a couple of friends, and when I read it. A girlfriend, my best friend said, oh my God, Lamisa, there is, you know, I don't know if I should cry or I should rejoice, but there's so much power in that. And so if you don't mind, I'll read it. I'll read that oh, excerpt sure. Go ahead. And, and that'll kind of set the basis as, as to why. And let me see if I can. Uh, now it is, now I'm going to be honest. This is, this is why it took me so long because what I'm going to read to you, I truly expose some painful parts of my life. Okay. Yeah. The excerpt was written on May 28, 2008. Okay. It said, today I cried my last tear from my worst nightmare ever. Martin Stewart. I almost feel silly acknowledging that one human being could cause, or should I say I allowed to cause so much strife in my life. For the past three years, I've allowed myself to be in bondage to a man that has physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially abused me. If I had to put a name to him, it would be my pimp. Oh, this is so hard to admit, because if he's my pimp, then I'm calling myself a prostitute. But reality says that's all I've been these past three years. I've allowed a man to curse me, defame me, manipulate me, integrate me sexually abuse me, belittle me, intimidate me, only to take my gifts and talents like leadership, team building, motivation, sales, negotiations, developer, spiritual guide, recruiter, pioneer, presenter, and financial advisor, and allow him to prostitute them for his own gain. And oh, he was so clever in his prostitution of me. He knew how to feed me just enough to keep me around, but not enough to empower me to open my eyes and understand my value and self-worth without him. Over these past three years, I've received cars, clothing, timepieces, jewelry, money, recognition, trips, and exposures to a lifestyle that many people 
have only dreamed of. On paper, it appears as if this man made me into the Cinderella I am today. But the key word is on paper. See, on paper, the prostitute looks good, too. She has all the clothes and materialistic things she needs to appear well taken care of. But it's all a facade. If people only saw the bruises she hides from the world from the outside, bruises that her pimp has purposely put there. My bruises are so deep, Martin has truly attempted to strip me of all my identity and self-worth. Mm. He would so eloquently describe me as a functioning illiterate. I've been called an effing bitch, stupid, idiot, fool, dumb, ignorant, inadequate, ugly. Oh, I could go on and on. The real sad part to all of this is even though he expressed daily how insignificant I was to him, I woke up every morning looking for ways to get him to accept me. I always wanted to please him. The first thing I would wake up in the morning was him telling me how stupid I was, and I would end my day with him being the last person to talk to me, telling me how stupid I was. Mm -hmm. You know, I would call him crazy, but after thinking about it, was it he who was crazy? Or was it I who was the crazy one? So why have I allowed myself to be abused like this for so long? Was it for the money, the clothes, the security, the fame, the need to be just needed or wanted? Or was it just for plain attention from a male who had the outward appearance of success? You know, maybe it was for a little bit of it all. But in the process, I lost my husband, my family, my friends, my children, and oh Lord, help me. I almost left, lost my Lord. I allowed my need for success to almost destroy the inner core of who I was. The other sad side to this story is that I not only allowed Martin to demoralize me, I recruited others into the same ring of prostitution. I willingly presented Martin as the savior, knowing at the same time he was only soon become their pimp. It's one thing for one to choose to be in bondage, but it's another thing to entice others to join you in hell. I'll never forget the day I sat on my bed in tears asking God to forgive me for bringing people into this lion's den. I remember calling each person by name and releasing them from demons that Martin had placed on them. And it was almost immediately that people started leaving the company. I was so happy for them. No more torture, no more pain, no more insults. But why couldn't I also leave? My mouth would say, God's not through with me here yet. But my heart would say, I'm so afraid to leave. Who's going to support me and my children? I now have the responsibility to not only provide for myself and my children, but I also had an ex-husband that I had to support, to support as well. I was in a new territory on unfamiliar grounds with no real family and to have my back and that had my back if I needed it. The little family I had, I was supporting them. So where would I go? Where could I make the same amount of money I was making now? And who would really hire me, being that for eight years, I was just a mother at home? These are just some of the fears I had going through my mind. I had two daughters who were getting ready to go to college, and how would I afford this? And then my mind would focus on that quiet whisper in my ear saying, I told you you needed Martin. Without him, who will provide for you? He's helped you in the most critical times in your life, like when your house went into foreclosure, when you needed a car, when you needed extra money for your children. He's done so much for you. Why would you leave that? Then I would find myself asking, why would I leave all that? Well, as I started, I will finish. Today, I shed my last tear for Martin. This is his official burial in my life. His eulogy reads as follows. Martin Stewart lived his days in life in turmoil. Even though he lived 42 years, he was nothing but a bruised and battered little boy inside. Because of his upbringing and the abuse he endured as a child, he spent his days fighting the demons in his own mind. Today, I bear a man that truly added no value to my life except teaching me how to love my enemies in spite of whatever they have done to me. Today, I bury a cold, manipulating, calculating, heartless person who spent his days on earth judging and belittling others to build his own self up. See, today, I bury a little bitty boy who used words to hurt people because he didn't know how to express his own pain. Today, I bury a sexual abuser caught up in the deepest corners of his mind. 
He abused others through sex because he didn't love who he was. Today, I buried a manipulator who used his money to get people to do just about anything. However, the saddest part of it all is that in the end, he couldn't use his money to buy the two things he wanted the most, love and peace of mind. Mm -hmm. See, today, I buried my abuser. He has no power over me anymore. And believe it or not, he's never had any power over me. The power that he thought he has was the power that I gave him. Today, I buried Martin Stewart so that, they, I, so that I can once again live. As I sit on my bed, God is restoring me back to a bigger and better Lanisa. Everything I allowed Mark to take from me will be, dist- will be restored tenfold. My confidence, my love, my body, my mind, my family, my children, my health, my emotions, my money, my houses, my land, and more importantly, my Lord and spirituality. Today, Lanisa is being pimped no more. Today, I am born again. Today, I am blessed and divine and, and, divine and being inspired to create hope. Wow. So that is Stuff. what inspired this book. Yeah. Um, there was a lot, a lot of pain, a lot of pain. And yeah. I knew that the pain came from a lot of the, the, how I was raised. It came from my weight issues. It came from the, the relationships that I've had with men. It came from relationships that I've had with people around me, friends and family. And that's when God just said, Lanisa, I need you to take a five-step process and you need to rebuild who you are because you've forgotten who you are. And I need you to go back and identify all that pain and I need you to find the joy in it. And when you find the joy in it, it's going to reestablish you to a place that you've never, ever, ever can imagine. And I'm telling you, when I start getting back in alignment, and that's when I could finish the book after I went, when I talked to you, and I started this in 2008, but I, yeah. I mean, I could not finish it until Anissa started getting back to knowing who I really am yeah. as, a, as a source of God. And mm. when I tell you that this book has freed and helped, so I, mean, I get testimonies every day from people saying, Lanisa, oh my God, I wish, you know, I had a lady call me the other day and she said, um, she asked me if she could call me and I, and I let her call me and I never, I, which was odd to me. But when she called, she said, Lanisa, this is so blessed me. And she said, but I, the reason I wanted to call you is because I'm trying to figure out how to get entice my daughter to read the book. And she said, every, I know she's going through these things because all she saw me go through these things. Mm-hmm. And your book is such a place that I know if I wish somebody had a freed me at her age. Yeah. So I, I'm loving it. I am just, um, yeah, Beautiful. it's all just coming full circle for me right now. And Beautiful. Yeah. Is it, uh, Lanisa, is it on um, Amazon? It is on Amazon. Okay. It is. We'll Absolutely. Put a, we'll put a link down below just specifically for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, For sure. So, um, yeah. So that is, you know, I know I just exposed a lot of stuff there, but that's, that's the journey. I mean, that was the journal that I wrote in. I just said, I can't take this anymore. And I never, it was never meant for anybody else's ears or anybody else's eyes, but I was just sharing it with a girlfriend and she said, Oh my God, Lenise, there's so much pain in that, but it's so much power. Yeah. And you're not the first woman that has dealt with a lot of issues. Yeah. And even though you're better and you're at a better place, sometimes God doesn't do things just for you. He does things mm. for you to help others. Yeah. And so that's kind of yeah. how mm. that all came about. And I'm sure there'll be someone <laughs> watching this that that'll resonate with them and move them because they're still in that. That's absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, um, and I'll just kind of tell you what the chapters are about and, and maybe that will help yeah. because it, it, it took, um, the, the, the first chapter is called um, Relive, Identify, and Forgive. 
um, the biggest thing God had me have to do with this is that I had to relive, you know, a lot of times we sugarcoat pain. We don't like to deal with it because pain is pain. Yeah. And I'm like, God, you're trying to tell me to eulogize this pain. You're trying to tell me to find the joy. I, I don't even want to deal with it. But it's like, how can I, how can I clean up a wound, Lenisa, if you don't want to go down and clean it out? Exactly. You've got to go and you've got to dinner at first that you got a wound. And then you got to put some medicine on it and don't just put a band aid on it. You've got to yeah. get down in there and clean that out. Yeah. So that is, I had to relive it. I had to identify it. Yeah. I had to relive it. And then I had to forgive it because the hardest thing, it wasn't the craziness out of all the things that I've gone through in life. The hardest person that I had to forgive was me, girl. Yeah. Because I'm like, why was I, I kept saying, why was I so stupid? Why did I put myself in a situation yeah. where was my self worth? Why did I, why mm. did I, you know, put success over, you know, all of, so it took me a moment to even say, okay, Lenny, so you got to forgive yourself. And so that's really what the first chapter is, is walking people through the process of finding those painful points yeah. and identifying with them, reliving them and then forgiving them. Yeah. And once I did that, that's now, I, then the next chapter really goes into um, establishing your true identity. Mm -hmm. Because once I got kind of, uh, you know, made my plate clear, then I had to go back and say, well, really, who am I? Yeah. Who, who am I? And I thought I knew who I was, but I really didn't. Because if I really knew who I was, I would stop calling myself, oh, you're so fat. Or, oh, you're stupid. Or, oh, you, you oh, Lisa, how will you ever be successful? You're, you know, you didn't make enough money. Or, you're not succeeding as a mom because your kids just got disciplined. And I, would, I kept labeling myself with all these negative things yeah. based on what was happening around me. And God said, you need to change those I am's, baby. And the reason you keep getting everything that you're talking about is because you keep talking, you keep planting that seed. You're planting all these negative seeds thinking something positive is going to come out of it. And it's not. Yeah. And yeah. so that's that, that's that second chapter is based kind of on that. The third chapter, one of my biggest issues in life was weight. And that's why yeah. that's what got me to this Mabella body. I mean, yeah. that was one of my biggest struggles. Yeah. yeah. And, but through that, God showed me it was, it wasn't the exercise and it wasn't the diet. It's a mind shift. How can I profess that I love the body that I'm in and every day I look in the mirror and I say, oh, I hate my thighs. Yeah. Uh, and this, and actually this chapter is called booty and thighs. Oh my booty and thighs. Oh my, because that's what I kept looking at myself. Oh my God, my butt, look at my thighs. Oh my. And that, I mean, that was my world every day. Like, how can I be so ugly? How can I, you know? And that's when God said, you know, Lenisa, stop exercising, stop doing the weightlifting, stop all of that. Change the mindset. Yeah. change the mindset and that's yeah. where so that's kind of goes there and then the next one is the next one is treat them like a dessert you know women we either dealing with our weight or we're dealing with a man i mean that's just real and so god had to also go back and say lenisa you can be upset about your past relationships but you got to remember you got to pe treat people like a dessert instead of like the main course and you only treat things like a main course when you think that they validate you. Know what a main course is and know what a dessert is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, woo. So it <laughs> helps you to now understand what your self-worth is because you, I'm going to tell you, desserts are great, but it's a, 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 dirt, a dessert is not going to sustain you. You yeah. need your meat and your vegetables. Yeah. And when you understand what that is in your life, you're not, you're going to look at a man as no, babe, you good, but you just a cherry on the top. I'm already, I'm at a complete place. Mm -hmm. So that's what that chapter does. And let's see, I, it's five chapters. Um, are you my ride or die? Are you my ride or die? Um, and that's friendships. That was a big issue. You know, women, 
We always, you know, we, because we're nurturers, we want to bring people in our life and put them in our circle real quickly. And, um, that was me because, you know, that was my validation. We talked about that in the first thing. People, the more I had people to love me, the more I felt worthy, Mm. but everybody that I brought in my space. And I say this all the time, everybody that's wearing your jerseys, not on your team. And it was just, I got hurt a lot of times. And so this chapter really says, who's your ride or die? Who is that person that is really there, meant to be there for a lifetime? I mean, things are brought in your life for a reason and for a season and for a lifetime. And you better learn Mm. to discern through that and walk through it and don't rush that process. Because when you rush that process, really what you're doing is um, you're not in a healthy place because you're trying to get somebody else to fill a void that you think they can fill, but they they can never fill it. So the minute you start getting in a healthy place, you're going to attract healthy people. Yeah. And um, that's, so that's kind of, that's, that's the book in a, in a nutshell. And, love you it. know, I'm kind of like you. I, I love how you always, you know, you make us apply stuff. I don't believe you just should give somebody some words without giving an application behind it. And so mm. after every chapter, there is a, a journal, a journey that is called is journal time and they have yeah. little steps they have to do. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Yeah, that's so it. That's the other book that you showed us a minute ago, the, the weight one, just hold that up again. Is that one on Amazon as well? The Bella yes. Body. The Bella body actually. Yeah. Right. And I will give you now the Bella body goes with the nine week program. Okay. Yes, that's what the I was nine, right, you mentioned it in the right. interview. Yes. Now yeah. the Bella body. And it's so funny. This is, this is actually, this is like crazy to me. Both books kind of around both of my parents passing. This was inspired because of my mom passing and the eulogy is kind of around my, you know, men and so it's crazy. But um, for those that don't know that, um, and I told, I'll tell that story very quickly. Um, I was with my mom was 50, it was 56 years young. Uh, My mother was the pillar. I thought she walked on water. Strong black woman told me that I could walk on water. I mean, that's just what she was. And, and, um, she had her PhD in education. She had her real estate license. She had her construction license. She owned her own construction company and she had a a restaurant, um, on the side and did a little Amway on the side. My mother did everything a true entrepreneur and raised me to believe that I could have and do and be anything that I wanted, even though, well, we won't get into my own self-esteem issues, but that's who she was. Yeah. And on February the 11th, I was with her at 8 p.m. And by 1 a.m. on February the 12th, my little brother called me and told me my mom had passed in 56. And that just destroyed everything. I was like, mm. what? What did she what, You mean, how could she pass? What did she do? But that's when I realized um, heart, heart, heart just had a heart attack. Yeah. And she had a heart attack because one, all those jobs, she wasn't working, she was working hard, but not smart. See, yeah. when we don't do things right, and there's a reason yeah. that you should not do action out of fear. Don't do, don't yeah. work out of fear. Yeah. Fear will shut you down. So yeah. I know the stress stuff are doing all of that. Yeah. So we're not, right, we're not meant to, to do all of that as women. We really are not. So yeah. she was working very hard and working smart. And then when it came to her health, she was very reactive instead of proactive. Yeah. And that, but here again, I was growing up just like her. Yeah. I was doing the same thing. And I'm going to show you my body. My body was overweight. I'm going to see if I, hopefully, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I was a hundred. Yeah. I was a, if you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. How many, how many months from, how many months from first picture to last picture? First, first day one, day yeah. one to day 74. So I'm going to put it up there. Day one oh, to day 74. It was only like three, not even three months. Yes. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. No dieting, no dieting, no exercising, just changing a mindset. Beautiful. That's all I did. God said, Lanisa. Yeah. Quit trying to do change, you know, and that's what we do. We look at physical stuff to yeah. change our world mm-hmm. and it's not, it's spiritual. We, and that's what, that's what you do. You say, you say that it starts with, yeah. if we yeah. want happiness, 
it starts within first. Yeah. And once you start to change who you are within, everything else has to come to you. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's where I went to the manifestations of the fruit of the spirit, and which are nine. And so each week I took one of the, the manifestations, one of the fruits, and I broke that thing down. The first week is goodness. Goodness is, I had to say, okay, Lord, why did you give us goodness? But if we're told we're made in his image and we're told that he's the best of the best and you can have all you want to be and there's just no lack there's a well if he's all of that guess what i'm <laughs> all of that too so i had to first say lanisa and i stood in front of the mirror all my big booty and thighs and everything yeah. butt naked and i said <laughs> i'm good i'm good yeah. i am good and that whole week i concentrated on just looking at my body and saying, I love me. It was like my yeah. rebirth. Yeah. Beautiful. And so each week I went through that and those nine weeks. And when people saw me going through a transformation, they were like, what are you doing? What exercise are you doing? What? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm just, you know, I'm changing here. And hence what it's over. It's, this was developed in 2012. Yeah. This is how the program Beautiful. Well, we'll put a link to that down below too, because I know we, sure. we you mentioned it in the last one, and yes, yeah. and I've had some great yeah. success. Thank you from that. I mean, people Good. that signed up, yes, and <laughs> I, I've gotten testimonies even from that saying yeah. thank you. You helped us, and yes. So I, yeah, I love you. I wasn't expecting. I'm gonna tell you. I would. I wanted my whole purpose of the first interview was to one. Let everyone know how beautiful and how wonderful you have been to my soul and how God sent you at the right time to help me begin to love me. Yeah. And even though I'm a self-love coach and that, yeah. you know, that was my yeah. thing that, that was so hard for me to call you. Here I am a self-love coach and I've forgotten to love me. I have just yeah. totally forgotten. And out of all places for me to Google, God sent me to you and all you kept saying, it begins with you. It yeah. begins with you. And I'm thinking, what am I missing? Yeah. And when you yeah. helped me to get back to that, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did the first interview. My whole thing was, guys, yeah. spend the money, get with her, listen to her, <laughs> do whatever you need to do. It's worth it. I had a girlfriend that, um, that would ask me and I, and, and I was very point blank with her because she, she's like, Lenisa, well, how much did you have to pay for your hour consultation? What on oh, yeah. oh, yes. And I said, $200. She was like, Oh my God, that was so much. And I yeah. said, excuse me. She says, I said, what do you mean so much compared to what? Okay, help me, help me understand that because right now, <laughs> I feel like I really, I mean, I got my life back. I, I feel so good. Now, okay, $200. Now, how much did that purse, that Louis <laughs> that you're carrying, how much did that cost? And she looked at me, she said, Lanise, I said, hmm, and she wears a weave too. And I said, and how much did you pay to get that weave in your hair? Oh, I think that was like $600, right? Because you wanted the real hair. Are. Girl, that's cheap. That's wow. cheap, honey. Yes, that's cheap. I, and I know that industry because my kids are both cosmetologists. They own their own spa. <laughs> my daughter, I mean, literally ships wigs out to people because she's great in her industry. They can be as much to eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars. Yes, wow. for a wig. Yes, no, a custom that, wig. Is that? That's incredible. But here we are. We'll do <laughs> spend all the money in the world to dress up the outside. Yeah. Not knowing that that's not going to fill the void on the inside. Yep, exactly. It is right. just not going to do it. So, what is two hundred dollars for a session to get a foundation mm -hmm. to back being you? That's why I tell people, even with my, I don't, I don't budge. I, I mean, you're either going to pay one seventy nine for a nine week program, or you're not. I'm not. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Exactly. You, you know, you just you, yeah. you got to love you. I mean, who goes? I mean, come on. People go to dinner for, <laughs> for two people at a nice restaurant, spend more than that. That's so true. you just have to put your value. And I think that's where mm. I wanted to come on with the first time and to say, value you. 
Yeah. Value you. Yeah. And if money is that much of an issue, you really need to do it because you still, there's something you're missing mm. because when you know how abundant you are on the inside, mm. money won't be an issue. It's not going to be an issue. And I tell you, yeah. girl, just that was the best $200 investment <laughs> that I have ever done. And I would do it again. That's why I said I almost was calling you like, hey, okay, <laughs> on yes, I need an hour of your time. <laughs> I still remember that session and you know I coach a lot of people. I still remember that session with you. I still, there's certain sessions that you don't forget and that was one of them. <laughs> because I was a basket case. I was a basket case. You, I'll know when I went. <laughs> That's not why I remember it. I just... <laughs> I was just when I tell you I got on and you said, Well just just kind of tell me about your life. Yeah. And I literally start probably at zero. And I just start walking and you were like, Oh my god, oh my god, you manifested all that? Yeah. You you you've done all that? And I'm like, No, is that no, you it, it, that's not good. It's still not good, let me tell you. And I got all the way to the end and you were like, Oh, <laughs> But do you realize you're a manifester? I'm like, but I still don't know how to love me. You need yeah. to just tell me what I... And so, yeah, that so how, was, that's the piece. Going back now with all that new stuff that's happened, how's the self-love coaching going? Are you, are you, oh. what are you doing? Like in terms of you're splitting up your week, what are you doing? I'm telling you, um, it is, I thought business was great. Business is amazing. I mean, I am so in my, I mean, I guess it's when you become a product of your product, and I know that yeah. sounds cliche, yeah. but when you start walking in it and living it, people can tell. Yeah. And um, I'm having people that hit me up. I mean, I'm doing, I love the Bella Body program. I mean, it's automated. People can go through it on their own time, but I'm having calls now and saying, Lanisa, I'm doing your program, but can you personally coach me? I yeah. need you to person. I need yeah. you. And so that's kind of what has happened. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of events with my book, um, the eulogy, I didn't, I mean, the eulogy really was for me. You know, I was like, okay, let me just get this off. And if it blesses somebody, it does. Yeah. Man, I mean, I've had people to say, hey, can you come and do a book reading or a signing? And, you know, can are, would you be willing to even have a little small group to walk women through this yeah. process? And so it is turning into something that I would have never Beautiful. dreamed of. I'm not it surprised. really is. I, I have to say, I'm not surprised. It is. You are such a giver and you're so passionate about this stuff. So mm. it is just you reap what you sow. <sighs> Well, and you know what? Thank you for that. I'm learning to, to say thank you. I've always, um, you know, when you're on that codependency side, you always try to hide yourself. So I'm learning to, to take, take it and say thank you. Um, but I just want everyone to feel what I feel. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. and again, I'll tell you, as I said on the first one, I don't know why the Lord waited to 50 years of my life for me to finally feel this, <laughs> but oh my gosh. Um, and, and, and I have people on Lisa, you know, you don't even look 50. And I'm like, I really don't feel 50 now. Let me tell you, I, I am. So I um, still haven't gotten the man. And I don't, I mean, but let, let, let me take that back. Let me take that back. I have plenty of people yes. that are attracting, but I know now I'm at, I'm at such a peace with who Lanisa is that it's like, hmm. <laughs> Let me be patient. Right now, I'm enjoying. I'm actually, I'm enjoying giving right now. Yeah. I'm enjoying my work right now. I'm yeah. enjoying the back. And and, and yeah. not that I, I know. I know my husband is coming. He may be watching this video right now. Okay, yeah. if you're there, call me. No, I don't. But, uh, <laughs> but I know it's coming. I know it's coming, and I can't wait to call you and say, "Oh yes, yes." Yeah. I'm finally, he's finally proposed and I finally found a man that found me and it's right. But I'm so focused on giving and yeah. I want everyone that I come across to, to feel that I, the way that I feel. So I don't have that void. It's not a yearning to say, oh, I need somebody. Where's my man? It's yeah. just not. 
Yeah. And typically, as you know, when you get in that space, that's when they show up. And that's kind of what they've been doing. Men have been just showing up and I'm kind of like, okay, just, mm. just hold on. Um, I'm a little, okay, well, we can go out, but let me just tell you where I am in my life right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's um, such a, just a way better position to be in, isn't it? Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, I, you, you know, my story, I've been on the end of, I mean, y'all just heard me read my excerpt, but yeah. with the cheating, with the, the abuse, with the, it, it's just everything. I, I'm, I'm being the pursuer, you know, I've learned and, and I'll give you guys this. I've learned to choose happy when it comes to relationships now. And I really mean that. And happy for those that know me, I'm an acronym cream. Happy stands for First, before you do anything, make sure you have a healthy mindset. Is your, do you have a healthy, healthy mindset? Because if your mindset is not healthy, you don't need to add that to someone else's mess. Because you're going to then, and, and, and as I told you last time, it was very selfish of me to put a responsibility on someone to make me feel loved. That's yeah. such a selfish way to live your life. Yeah. So if, your mind, if you're not healthy, don't even look for a relationship yet. Yeah. Get you right. Yeah. Then once you realize you're healthy, the next letter is A. A. Ask the what if question. Yeah. What if nothing changes about this person? Would I want to wake up with them every morning? And would I want to go to sleep with them? Yeah. Because I don't know, you know, we're about, we're the same age, girl. Yeah. At our age, people don't change. <laughs> And so a lot of times we go into relationships thinking we, as women, we can change a man and you can't. So if it's something up front that you just know, Ooh, I don't like this about him. Then step back. You don't need it that much. Yeah. So ask the what if question. <laughs> the next letter is P. Did you pray about it? Mm. Did you pray about it? Because, you know, we can be in such a needy place that we see every man. We want to make him our man. But every man didn't come in your life to be your man. He may come in just to teach you something yeah. or you glean something. Yeah. So pray about it. Then the next P is, now this one was huge for me with my self-esteem issues. Are you the pursuer or the pursuee? Yeah. I messed that up a lot. Girl. <laughs> and, and I'm going to say it and I messed it up one because what did my mom do? My mom taught me to be an entrepreneur. You go after what you want and you yeah. make it happen. Lene. So you make that thing happen. Well, as a woman, I'm running after a man saying, Hey, I'm here. And I'm trying to manipulate him to see me and love me and woo him in. That's not women. That's not what we're supposed to do. No. We're supposed to be pursued. And what I do know and what I've learned about a man, when a man really wants you, oh, he will pursue you. Yes. You don't have to force them. And when a man wants you, he going to come for you. Yes. So stay in your lane, be the pursuer or the <laughs> pursuee. And then the last why is, are you equally yoked? And not the biblical stance. I mean, that's what I used to hear growing up as a mom, you know, are you equally yoked? Not that way. Yeah. Equally yoked to me is, can I really be a blessing, make this person a better person? And can they make me a better person? Because it's about growing. It's about becoming more of a person, not hindering a person. Yeah. And if you can't really see that they can help you become better and you can help, it's not worth it. So I choose happy now. That's kind of where I am. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to, once you and I finish the interview, we'll put um, down below your books and also your coaching and anything else you want me to add your email, whatever, we'll do a nice copy and paste, okay. and make it a bit bigger. Cause you've got, you know, a lot of other things on the go and things that we didn't get to discuss in the first interview. Okay. So, Oh, that is just beautiful. And, and you know what? I just love hearing that people are doing like what you've written here, self love coaching. It's not just coaching. It's self love coaching. Get that straight first. <laughs> It is self, oh, and I mean, and, and I mean that. that. And so that's why I'm gonna go back to yeah. If the individuals are on this station, and they are because they love you, 
they need to take advantage of everything that you're saying. I'm serious in your, in your tools that you give, because, you know, some people it's one thing to talk book is one thing to talk theory. Yeah. But some people are given a gift to really be able to impress and help. And you are that person. This is you're walking in your gift. And if God or source or whatever universe allowed you to stumble across Anya's page and her videos and her meditations, don't just be a hearer of her, be a doer, implement what she's saying, because I am a personal witness. Even though I'm a self-love coach, I can tell you her stuff works. Her, her messages, the meditations, the self, if you, I would, I would implore you. I, yes, she puts a lot of information purchase, get on, get her one-on-one coaching, get her series, do it. Because the more you invest in you with this, the more you're going to be such a powerful person walking this world. And there's not going to be anything you can't have and do. And so that's what keeps me coming back to you, girl. I mean, it just keeps me and that's what keeps me tooting your horn. And I'm not going to ever stop tooting your horn. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So, and you are, and you already know what I told you before we even came on what I saw. So I'm, I won't bring that up, but I'm going to be a part of your life the rest of your life. I don't know if you want me that much, but I'm, I'm here, girl. I ain't going nowhere. I know. I understand what free me. <laughs> I do absolutely love you. Make me belly laugh with your enthusiasm. I love it. <laughs> I know I'm over the top. My kids says, Mom, you are so dramatic. And I'm like, and maybe I am, but you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is, and it's you know, we've all we're all different in how we interact with the world. And you you're like watching a really good TV show, Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like what you're saying about I mean, you're talking about the stuff you've done with me, but I had to go and do my own stuff with my own coach. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. people pay it forward in your lifetime and then you're going to go on and pay it forward to other people. And, you know, I think you go through, through levels of like what you were saying, I was a, I was a coach and I missed the whole self love thing. I thought I understood it, but I did. not And I had pretty much the same stuff going on. I was focused on, external things and I didn't have them and that's why I was crying and upset and it was making me unhappy but it wasn't that it was my mindset about I haven't got that therefore it makes me unhappy that was really affecting me not the not having the thing in the first place right 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 right. you know that all that is levels of learning and I think at 50 I mean I'm 51 um uh, something happens when you turn 50 Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Oh, my God. You look back and you think, thank God. You know, I mean, I look at some of the people that I interview that are in their 20s and I think, oh, my God, they're learning this so young. They're going to apply it. They're going to get... I mean, I started at 20. I think I was 27 when I first got a tumour and then I was reading Louise Hay. But Mm. after that, I kind of let it go and went back to living and complaining and doing the usual stuff that I was doing. And then you know, I had to go through a lot of other stuff to go back to it again. So, you know, those that come to it and actually stay with it and not just listen to it. Oh my gosh. It. Apply it. Apply it's it. it's amazing. And I'm going to tell you, and, and I know this may sound bad, but I'm just going to be real with you. Yeah. Especially in our culture, in the black community, this yeah. kind of stuff sometimes sound hokey pokey, you know, okay. hold up. Yeah. This is a new age stuff. What yeah. you talking about? They said universe, or they said source, and, and now this is God, and this is Jesus. We ain't talking about, what do you mean you got the power? To... So yeah. we, we're typically not raised to even no. to embrace any of this. No. And so, and that's sad. That hurts me, To uh, mm. I mean, it really does. It's like, oh, my God, we're missing so much. If you really understand who God is, Wow, you're <laughs> missing it because God said out of everything, remember these three things. He said, love me with all your mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's key. 
if we yeah. hear that love your neighbor as you love yourself but if you don't know how to love yourself you can't love your neighbor and you can't love him yeah. and i'm like how doesn't everybody get that it all starts with self-love yeah. it wants love is truly the foundation that's what god is asking us to do mm. this is not a new age thing this is not a mm. hokey pokey thing this is a real thing he says love conquers all and yeah. i'm like what why why don't we get it so that's why with my kids you know they I, and i love my daughters they're 28 they just turned 28 and my son is 20 they're my best friends, but they will, they put people on the phone with me all the time. Uh-uh, you need to talk to my mom because you're thinking bad. And uh, uh let me tell you, and uh-uh, and all their friends call me uh, Mama Nisa. And uh-uh, let's say, Mom, you're the only, uh, you're the only person. We don't even want our parents to come to events, but we like you to come. And it's because yeah. I'm teaching them, you know, things about yeah. love and about peace. And it doesn't yeah. have to be this hard and get it. So, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. That's right. I'm Wonderful. It really, boy, oh boy, if they could teach this from kindergarten on, mm. my goodness. I'm going to tell you when, when truly money is not an issue for me. Yeah. I'm going to start a school. Yeah. I'm going to start it. I am. I'm going to start a school that is based around the I am or the law of, I'm going to do that. Because wow. I mean, I do that with, my, and it's so funny. I'm gonna show you how much you know. I'm always running off, but I'm gonna show you how much <laughs> I'm doing it. Let me show you. Create it because there's nothing out there, and yeah. I just can't find a way to publish it. And I got to get it all together. Yeah. But my granddaughter, who's five, and I'm like, oh my god, what if I could do that? What if she? So I created this book. Oh wow when i look in the mirror so yeah. she reads this to herself i look in the mirror and so like in the first one it says i look in the mirror and what do i see a beautiful person staring back at me i am beautiful i am beautiful and so and, and read another one i look in the mirror and no matter what my friends think i am an amazing person who is full of strength and she'll look in the mirror and she says i am full of strength I'm, and so my five-year-old wow. granddaughter, I created this for her because of what you're saying. I'm like, I want her to have a better foundation than I have. Yeah. So yeah, I, I made this little, yeah. What I a look fabulous the book. book. There's book number three to be published. That's fabulous. Yeah. I'm, I, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. To be continued. Oh, there's always that look. If, if kids grew up with that, imagine the adults they would become. The oh my gosh. Oh, world. I can Can you imagine had we really gotten this at that age? What would we be doing right now? Yeah. And having parents that were applying it while you're growing up, that would be exactly mind blowing exactly. experience. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Ah! A virtual hug. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, I love you. I so love you. I love you. And so, you know, I'm telling you, I'm manifesting what I told you. We're going to do that what we talked about before. Just know that. I see the couch. I see the couch, girl. Well, we can't just with what that is. Listeners, remember, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell them. I'm not going to say it, but just remember, I see the couch. That's all y'all got to say. Say, I see the couch. Yeah, <laughs> the couch. But, oh, the couch is a beautiful pink. Ooh. It's just, it's so plush. Yes. I'm telling you, it's going to be a oh, with pillows and we're going to be sitting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Pink with beautiful pillows. I already see it, girl. You, you, you laughing. I told you. I told you. Just remember when I when just remember. Yeah, I will remember. <laughs> we will we will reveal that on another interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, my lovely, thank you so much for coming. Yes. Here. Beautiful. Thank you. Lovely to hear thank you for had. asking. Lovely to hear what's happening. It's so to me, just doing interviews with people that are creatively and just spiritually bringing their work together with who they are and not just mm. doing jobs or 
you know, I mean, we all go through doing jobs. Right. We need to survive and money. Right. Nothing wrong with that. But when you can take the next right, step, right. step up and bring together who you are with your work, that is always oh my God, fitness. moment for me. That is. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So fabulous, fabulous. Well, thank you. Do you want to say goodbye to the viewers and then I'll say goodbye and then you and I can hang on here for a minute and say goodbye okay. in private? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, guys, once again, um, thank you for even taking the time out to, to listen. For those of you that have gotten this far, it may have been too much for you. You may not even get this far. But those that have, all that tells me is that you want something better. Mm -hmm. If you've lasted this long, you've asked. And the blessing is, it's right here in front of you. But you have to, you have to accept it and you have to do something about it. And so if anything, I'm going to tell you if, you, if you really want to do something about it, please take advantage of all the tools that Agnes has. Um, if I can help in any way, please mm -hmm. let me know because at the end of the day, we just want you to see who you are yeah. and to walk in that true self-love place because we know how it feels to be on that place, that yeah. happy place, that place of a, a peace that surpasses all understanding. And I know I can speak for Agnes the rest of our life. We know our mission is to just empower people like you. So yeah. do it. Do it, do it, do it. Don't sit and listen to this anymore. Don't look at another video or whatever and not apply it. Do it. Put the work in. Exactly right. Love you. Beautiful. Great sign off. Okay, everybody, I'll put down the links down below for everything Lanisa and I talked about, bits and pieces, links, and information about her coaching and her books and everything else that was mentioned today. For those of you that want to go on and purchase those things, Lots of love and I will see you all in the next YouTube.